How I get into a trade at limit every single time is something that I get asked quite often when I'm doing my day trading. Now, in this video, I'm going to really be going over the Insilico terminal platform, more so how I use it specifically to aid my own trading, how I learned to get into at limit every single time, and how you can do the same thing and set up a similar concept so that you can personalize it for yourself so that you can have a similar experience with the platform or any other execution type of platform out there that you're using. So when you're loading up the new Insilico terminal platform, you're going to be loaded with this kind of blank overview here. And again, to, to load it up, just click and connect your accounts. I won't really go over that too much. But what you're going to add is going to click on the top right hand corner. You've got this little three sign button here. Click on that and you're going to get the options to add these kind of panels as you wish. And to note, I'm using the multi view rather than the simplistic view. But again, this can be adjusted as you wish. Mainly what you want to have is a chart. CLI really is kind of one of my main things. And if we just add anything else, really is kind of, you know, uh, place orders or positions, place orders. And, and that's all we really need for now, to be honest. And that's what we're going to be diving into right now. And I'll be going through a few of the other sections as well. But these are the primary tools I'm really using when I'm day trading. And I'm going to go into the hotkeys that I use in detail and, and the CLI and just getting into positions quickly, getting out. And I've set up some test setups for you to be seeing here and just to show and demonstrate that to you today. So what you're going to do is first of all, just drag these around to really kind of customize exactly how you want your layout to be. Something similar to this is kind of like how I have mine, the chart fairly large, this can, can kind of be shrunk down a bit. You then have this on the left hand side, place order form on the right, just trim this up, place order, CLI, and all of this kind of laid out exactly how you want, doesn't really matter. But this is kind of how I have my layout, layout if you want to be kind of replicating that in some way. Now what you can then do in this platform is essentially, I've just connected my account, again this is just like my test platform. And then once I've done that on, for example, one of the, just one of the charts here, then what I can do is then go to the top left hand side, and then position link this. So if I just click on blue, for example, and a quick tip for you is if I just then do that and then press this little button here, that's just gonna link all of these little side panels to essentially link to the exact same account and ticker symbol that I'm using on this one here. So now we've all matched them all up and now we're kind of ready to go and get into more so the use cases of this terminal. The how I get in at limit every single time is gonna be included drastically within this segment as well. So on the left hand side, you've got your regular kind of order form that you'd be witnessing on Bybit, all your other exchanges of choice as well. It's very similar to that, but that's not really the expertise in this video. I want to be really going over the CLI a bit in more detail, how I set up the terminals for that and so on and so forth. But on the left hand side, you always got the order form. And again, within this, you can, you've got a few options that you might not be familiar with, chase, scale, scale side, order, all of this stuff on the limit side, the market side. And mainly what I'm using actually to get in at these limit prices is the chase quite rarely but mainly the scale option, okay? And let's dive into why that is a bit more in detail and how I've set that up. Now, before we get into this, there's something I want you to be able to understand. It's a terminology and it's called maximum adverse excursion. And that is essentially your MAE. You'll probably see it in a lot of different platforms, kind of how it's calculated is, is at, in, when you open any any given trade and mainly your winning trades or even your losing trade, well, losing trades are quite obvious, obviously, but on any given winning trade, how far are you offside before price actually goes in your initially intended direction? Okay, and what I figured out over a long period of time through my trades that I had journaled was that on any given trade, I was always offside, even if I was winning, I was always offside by at least 0.1% at any given point. Meaning, you know, if I market entered, right, that I was always at, regardless out of 600 plus trades, there was, you know, I was 99.7% of the time gonna be offside at least 0.1% of the time. And then that got me thinking, okay, if I'm offside at least that often, rather than getting in at market, there's a little window, you know, that 0% to 0.1% of the time, you know, that little window there where I'm always offside at least that amount, that is an opportunity rather than moving, thinking about invalidation in regards to maximum adverse excursion, that actually gives me the opportunity to go, okay, well, rather than getting in at market, that small fraction of window, let's say from where we are now, 0.1%, okay, so it's even like this small margin here, that is a position where I can actually get in at limit rather than getting in at market. So my overall goal was to be executing as if I was executing a market order, but actually executing via limit orders. And I'm gonna show you how I went through that, subption, uh, that section now and kind of came up with a solution to that. So now that you understand the maximum adverse excursion and for the reason why I'm getting in every single one of my trades at limit, let's dive into the CLI now, because if I go into this now, and I'm just gonna hit right now, find list, right, you can see every single one of my hotkeys that I've set up for you to kind of be replicating if you so wish okay and within this you can see i've got all my orders so we're going to dive through this in a bit bit of a you know i've set this all up in test functions so you can see exactly what they all do and let's run through them now so a is you know shift a and it's what i've done so the capital a is done on purpose okay so this is done so when i hit shift a on my keyboard for the capital a you know what it's going to do is cancel any given orders that are within the page at that any given moment it's going to cancel that 
Then you've got the B key, which I'll, you know, essentially what this will do, chase by my size. Now my size is a variable. So and this is something, again, I'll link a video in the description where you can go and watch kind of how to set up variables and I'll cover it in a later video, even in more detail anyway, but it's a variable and that variable can be linked to any sort of position size you want. And I'll be going through later how I set up hotkeys to kind of be setting up that position sizing as well. But chase by at my size, so chase by, let's just imagine $100 and I'll be going through a actual example and demonstration of this in a minute to 0.22%. So what happens is, let's just, I'm gonna show you now a very quick example. So if I just hit one on my keyboard, at my size is now shifted to $1,000 contract size, okay? And now if I hit shift B on my keyboard, it will chase by that $1,000 to 0.22%. Okay, so if I just hit shift B, you'll see price is now chasing and I'm chasing price, a limit chase, bidding 1000 you can see it's chasing it up and move bid up what we can actually do as well is if we go down to here add an activity symbol here you can see actively what's actually going on you know rather than just kind of being blinded by it you can see actually what's going on so you can see it's chasing price and if i want to cancel that chase again kind of moving very swiftly onto the next one chase cancel i just can just hit shift c and there you go it's canceled that chase order so i've set up hotkeys for that type of functionality if i so wish but i'm not primarily really using this chase by size too often okay and the chase by my size to 0.22 percent again your variable can be called whatever you want i've just called it my size so i can kind of reference it quite easily 0.22 percent is so you know if i'm chasing the order it will chase to 0.22 percent up and then after that point, it will cancel it because I don't want to be chasing too far offside if I need to get into a position if needed, which I don't do. Okay, so chase cancel. We've covered the first three. These do not currently work for me, but they used to on the old in silico terminal version. And what it would do is simply switch the instrument I was using. So switch, you know, shift D, switch the dot, shift D, uh, switch to ETH and I is shift to uh, switch to Bitcoin and linear versions, inverse and linear, you can hopefully see what I've linked up there. That's kind of that. Now we've got the OMP, again, we'll cover this, but essentially this is a chase cell size reduced. Now what this will do, again, it's actually quite useful this one, but if I hit shift O on my keyboard, for example, what this will do is when I'm in a trade, for example, I'm in a long and I want to close that long, okay, I can hit shift and O on my keyboard and it will, you know, chase sell the order and basically close that position size that I've got for a chase order. Okay, same with the shift P again. And look on your keyboard now. I mean, I'm running a QWERTY keyboard from the UK and you can actually see, you'll see where these keys are all lined up and they're kind of lined up in very similar functions and similar positions on the keyboard. But Shift O would close my long, Shift P will simply chase close my short, okay? So that's kind of the way I've got that set up. Then you've got chase cell, uh, well, Shift S, which will chase cell, similar function to the B1. Essentially, it will just chase close in the opposite direction, okay? So I've always got that set up. And again, my size to 0.22%, again, the opposite direction. And then you've got global X, which is again, chase. So this is where we're gonna get into to kind of the functionalities I actually do use the most. So global X, so shift X and shift Z. You're literally on the far left-hand side of your keyboard. You know, it should be shift Z is the buy, shift X is the sell. So shift X, for example, will sell my size into five from 0.01 to 0.08. Again, coming back to that 0.1%, I'm always offside. That is why I'm using this. So for example, my size is set now to 1000 dollars position size if i now hit shift x on my keyboard what happens it scales orders literally all in between that gap so again i've kind of achieved that goal right of essentially if i want to get into an order reactively rather i'm still reacting to all the trades that i'm being given but rather than doing so through the fashion of marketing in paying the fee again i'm actually hitting one button again in a similar function but i'm getting in at limit it might require some patience at time but over the large period of stats that i've gathered i actually know that i'm guaranteed to be at least offside this amount of the time therefore i will most likely get filled on this and you know i'll leave it in the books again so shift x will do that and place it place whatever size i want within that within that kind of limit there okay so we've got that in there so shift x uh, scale cell cool and now if i just cancel this so again something to do is referring back to the first kind of key bind shift a okay it will cancel all those orders there and let's just go again using one of the functions again chase by size reduce again to close this short okay it's chasing to close the short at full okay once that's closed we'll be out the position okay so shift x is to scale sell whilst we wait for this to fill and then you've got shift Z to essentially scale by in the opposite direction, okay? What I'll do actually just to hurry this process up, well, it's closed anyway, okay? So if I just now hit shift Z, boom, you can see I've scaled those orders very quickly there to cancel them, shift A. And this is all done, I spent a lot of time kind of coming up with this, 
okay, just so that I can be very quick with all the orders that I'm actually going to get filled on. You then got C, which is just a very useful thing because I'm looking at the CLI very option. Lowercase c simply clears the CLI, okay? So if we just type in buy and list again, okay? We can then see we're coming up, we're presented with this again, but I use that C just to clear the CLI and come up with a fresh view every so often, every time my key bind or the CLI gets cluttered. Again, a very useful tool within the CLI that you can be using is the up and down arrows on your keyboard. You can be kind of going up and down through previous options and history within the CLI, just using your up and down arrows on the keyboard. So you can see buy and list again, it's just come up there. You know, if I just come off this, hit C, cleared it. The one thing then I've got set up here, so we've covered all the kind of the major key binds. The rest of this is just to set up the position sizing for at my size. So at the my size zero, and again, I've done this in a very simple function, but mainly what you'd want to do is kind of set this up to personalize it for yourself. You know, my, my personal ones are very different to this. And I want to tell you how you can change these actually fairly quickly at some point. So set my size to 10,000, so zero, you can just see down here, if I just, you know, come off this, hit zero, my size set to 10,000, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And that's kind of the function I've just set it up now so I can show you a bit of an example in that scenario as to how you can essentially lay out your position sizing fairly quickly. Now there is one negative to this and that is that you can't be very specific with your position sizing, okay? So if you want to then adjust that, you can go into the top corner of your in silico terminal, click here and click on your variables, okay? And you can change it within here manually if you so wish, okay? It's not as quick at all, but again, if you want to like, you know, what I would say, imagine you've cal calculated your position sizing, you want it to be 8,333. What I would do is the following, hit eight, put the order in very quickly, and then the 333, come in here, put that in, and then I can then hit the same hotkey I want after that to then get into that same trade and it will then calculate to the total of 8,333. So just so you can see how it works there, and I'm sure later in the future in Silico Terminal will be adding in a functionality to essentially help this go out a quicker process so you can be adding certain values to your variables and position sizes. Now, what I can do within this, which is really useful as well for you all, is that you can all understand the aspect of sometimes you might wanna change your computer or whatnot, and that's gonna be quite useful. So what you can then do is go bind export or bind import. So for example, I'll leave these key binds just for you at the, I'll put them in the, in the video description of this. So you can, I'll bind export this. You just type in bind import within your key binds here, bind import, hit the enter button, and then you can import the file that I've just sent to you or that you've downloaded from the description into your in silico terminal if you do want to be trying the, uh, this, this type of functionality out. Now there's a few other CLI commands as well that I want you to be kind of aware of that I use on a very frequent basis. So what I want you to do first of all, just get us into a position to begin with. So, so let's just chase by really quickly $1,000. Okay, so this should be able to get us in fairly quickly. There we go, so we're filled. Okay, now let's say you want to set a position size or um, a stop loss in place really, really quickly. So there's a few ways you can do it. You can obviously go to the order form, which is great. And then recognize there's a lot of ways to be doing it in there. But there's many, many quicker ways to be doing it just purely within the CLI function. So a new function as well that I've come up with is you've obviously got relatively stop at and then you can even put in a dollar in place. So uh, 2850, for example. So look, we can, we've put in a stop at 2850. Okay, and that is now in place. So let's just cancel that order. Well, that's not working for some reason, but you'd cancel that order. Okay, I think that's calculated as a stop, hence why it wouldn't let me cancel it. But the new one which you want to put in is P stop at, you know, the same, you know, you can either put a value in, a dollar value in, or you can put in at, you know, 0.5%. So now we've put in a P stop. Now, what is a P stop? A P stop is a position linked stop. So very similar to what you'd get within Bybit, but instead you're actually position linking essentially within in silico terminal within just the, the segment here. You can also do this within the order form if you go to market, stop, uh, size, you know, position link, okay, position link, and then trigger. This is essentially doing the same thing, but within just the CLI format and a very quick and easy functionality. So yeah, that's the, those are really the, the few functionalities I'm using within this platform. Again, you've actually got close, you can close it at a certain size, you know, quote, price, scale, chase, all of these different functionalities. Let's say now I wanna close out this 50% at chase, right? Now let's say, this is actually, I use this quite frequently as well, to be honest, like, because I don't usually just close the whole position out at once but I'll close like 50% at chase and there's no significant rush on this either sometimes. Okay, so we'll do that, you know, just so you can get the, the functionality of it, okay. We need to tick up, it's ticked up, you know, we're left 50% within that side, 500, and the stop's also adjusted to formulate that same position size there, so you don't have to adjust your stop manually. Another way to take profit on this is I'll go like 33% at a certain price, again, at price, I don't have to type it in, I can just go up to here and go, okay, I wanna take out the highs. 
28249, hit the check bar, and there we go, taking 33% profit at the top. Close that. Uh, let's just completely get out of this trade as well, chasing the sell to completely close the rest now. Right, once that's closed, we'll see what happens and go from there. But this is really the main functionalities of Insilico Terminal. A few other fun functions I'm really using are, yeah, I'm not really using any of the order book stuff, to be honest. I'm mainly using the CLI a lot. Uh, you've obviously got, if you're a very visual person, turn on designer, so you can then, you know, use this to, to kind of formulate the way you're going to be running things. But mainly, I've showed you in great, great detail, to be honest, in a quite quick way, the actual the hotkeys I'm using to essentially take my trades and get in at limit every single time. There is really no excuse for me not to get in at limit. You can see there how I'm chasing, how I'm closing my chases, how I'm adjusting my position sizing, how I'm scaling in. Most of the time, I'm always using that scale function because I know I'm going to be offside X amount. It does also give you a slightly better entry. So that is the functionalities I'm running within it, uh, within Insilico Terminal and how I'm using this to really benefit my trading.